All right, we got this say they were the greatest team of all time. In fact, it's been a close contest since the opening tip. Both teams going bucket for bucket, neither of them really able to pull away. Someone is going to have to step up and take control of this game if they want to win. And of all the players on this court, of all the talent, the greatest shooter of all time, a former MVP, the future of USA basketball, it is none other than all reliable 39-year-old LeBron James who completely takes over this game. My boy did everything, bro. Look at this bench reacts. LeBron James open for three. LeBron James bodying inside his nose. He's a man. But does he take over? You have a right to do. With the game on the line and four minutes left in the fourth, LeBron turned back the clock and completely put Team USA on his back, scoring their final 11 points and single-handedly outscoring Germany. Mm. The young bucks are loving it. These performances should have came to an end years ago. And yet here we are, 22 years in, and the old geezer still got it. It's insane, bro. But wait a minute. This is the best basketball team on the planet. Some have even called this roster the best team of all time. It's not the best team of all time, though. If that's the case, then why the best team of all time was the one with Kobe, KD, LeBron going Carmelo, and Tony, all those guys. They were all going crazy and consistent, bro. I ain't gonna cap. But KD still didn't play, though. I don't even know if he's gonna play. being the only thing separating the U.S. from a loss. A couple months back, when this team was first announced, they were immediately hailed as one of, if not the greatest team ever assembled. However, through five exhibition games, three of which were won by six points or less, the title of greatest team ever seems to have been given out a bit prematurely. Is this team truly the best team we've ever seen? I don't think so, paper, bro. They have all the credentials are the other teams just that good now? Court, they are you know? nearly as dominant as some teams from the past. Maybe the other country is just better, you know? They're not going to stay the same forever. But it's still not the best U.S. team of all time. But, you know, they're good. But, respectfully, then, you know. This is for you, the Canadian Armed Forces. Damn, the Army doing the Olympics, too? The hackers at home, everywhere. Today, I've teamed up with DraftKings, the one-stop shop for all things fantasy sports, to bring you the largest best ball tournament in DraftKings history. Best ball is easy to play. Draft your team in a snake-style draft. There's no roster management, no waiver. All right, right. And watch your team collect points throughout the season while 2024 Olympics. Reaching out to teammates, friends, foes, all to better their odds of defeating a common enemy. Everyone else. And although fun to imagine, I've been know why White is on the team, bro. Seemed like a classic case. She'll be Jalen Brown or something. Jalen Benson, I don't know, bro. Damn. Man roster that some are saying is the greatest basketball team of all time. Hardy Burton shouldn't be on the team too, bro. Curry, Embiid, Tatum, AD, Booker, Kawhi, who has since been replaced by Derek White, Edwards. That make no sense, bro. And Bam, one of the most loaded teams in the history of basketball. And yet, five exhibition games into this year's Summer Olympics, and this team has just barely escaped with a win on multiple occasions. Nowhere near some of the colossal... But to be fair, the last World Cup when U.S. win with KD, bro, they were playing Which bad at first, man. Is this was it the World Cup? I don't know if it was World Cup. I don't remember, but... Dream team, a group of players that won games by a record <sighs> they ended up winning in the end. took basketball to a global scale. Are they greater than the Redeem team or even the U.S. Olympic team in 2012 led by Kobe and a prime LeBron and Durant? Well, it all depends on how you want to define greatness. Are we talking about a team with the best collection of talent or is greatness defined by how good they are as a collective unit? And since the 2024 U.S. men's Olympic team has yet to play a single non-exhibition game together, I assume we are referring to option number one. 
In terms of major career accomplishments, such as MVPs, championships, all NBA teams, the key milestones that we use to measure how great individual players are, here is how the 2024 US men's Olympic roster stacks up against some of the greatest teams of the past. Now, it's important to note that I only took into consideration the accolades these players earned leading up to the time of the Olympics. Damn. So, for example, although Michael Jordan won six titles and five MVPs by the end of his career, I only included the two titles and three MVPs he won heading into the 92 Olympics. This is only fair since players on the 2024 roster have yet to finish their careers and still have time to pile up more accolades. So this is a snapshot of how accomplished these teams were at the time of their formation. And when ranked against the most accomplished teams, you could make an argument that this 2024 team is the greatest of all time, just slightly edging out the US men's team in 1992 and in 96. Oddly enough, the 96 US men's Olympic team was more accomplished at the time of their formation than the 92 Dream Team was. Mm. But overall, this year's team is arguably the greatest team in terms of their basketball resumes. But that might be due to the fact that this year's US Olympic team is old. By the 92 Olympics, Larry Bird had already played his last NBA season. His back was completely toast, and he was the oldest player on the team by a considerable margin. He was 35, which means right now, Stephen Curry is older than Bird was during the 92 Olympics. <laughs> Let's not even in talk fact, about LeBron, Devin bro. Booker has already been in the league longer than most of the players on that 1992 Dream Team. So although this 2024 team has the advantage of experience and longevity, the team in 92 got many of their players during the peak of their careers. So what if instead of accolades and accomplishments, we looked at how good these players were individually at the time? Mm, the I mean, Edward is there. Is a chart of the not even Edward is his prime yet. Roster and their production and efficiency from this past season. With box plus minus on the Y axis and win shares per 48 on the X axis. Now, a few things jump out here. Tyrese Halliburton has been considered one of the weaker links on this roster, but he was actually one of the better players on this team throughout the regular season. LeBron James is really old and still really good, and Joel Embiid's spot is a quick reminder that if it weren't for a season ending injury this past year, the man might be a back to back MVP right now. And now for some context, here is the 2012 US Olympic team and their advanced numbers in the season leading up to the Olympics. LeBron was the best player on this team, followed by Chris Paul and Kevin Durant. They also had a veteran Kobe Bryant and Olympic Mello. And statistically, you can make an argument that the individual players on this team were better than the players on the 2024 team. Mm. Hold on, am I recording, was bro? relatively young and inexperienced in the international realm. With LeBron I got James scared, bro. Coming off of his fifth season in the league, a young Chris Paul entering his prime and MVP Kobe Bryant. But overall, this team probably wasn't as good as the U.S. roster this year. 1996, however, is one of the more underrated teams ever assembled, with a ton of 90s greats like Pippen, Gary Payton, Reggie Miller, and of course, the greatest front court lineup the world has ever seen. Featuring David Robinson, Hakeem Olajuwon, Shaquille O'Neal, Charles Barkley, and Karl Malone. <laughs> this team was experienced. They were all still in their prime, and as a whole, they were better than this year's team. Which leads us to the 1992 Dream Team, who are still on a completely different level from any other team before and since their inception. Because here's Michael Jordan, here's David Robinson, Magic Johnson, Drexler, Stockton, Barkley, and the rest of the team. And now, we have a better picture of just how good this 92 Dream Team was. The 1992 US Men's Olympic Team was so good that Anthony Edwards in 2024 was statistically worse than every single player on the 92 Dream Team outside of Christian Leitner, who hadn't even played a single minute in the NBA up to that point. Now, you may be wow. thinking that these stats of the players in 1992 might just be inflated or possibly a miscalculation. How was there so many all-time great players at their peak in the NBA in 92? And where are all of these players today? Well, they're playing for other countries. Because but I feel like who they're playing against were not that good as, you know? Y'all know what I'm trying to say. Jokic, here's Luka Doncic, here's Giannis, and here's Shea Gilgis-Alexander. 
So in terms of individual dominance, the 92 Dream Team would be like having this 2024 roster yeah. with some of their relatively weaker leagues. Yeah, true, true, true. It makes sense. Luka, Yoko, but the Giannis, thing is and... now is that most of the best players in the NBA are not from the US. That's the reason. It makes sense. SGA. That is how good the Dream Team was. And I don't know if we will ever see one single team as good as this 1992 US Men's Olympic Team was ever again. In 1992, basketball was a sport dominated almost exclusively by American players. The NBA, and by default the entire world, revolved around players from the US. There was of course exceptions to this. Among the elite foreign players of the early 90s were Nigerian-born Hakeem Olajuwon, who ended up playing for Team USA, Patrick Ewing from Jamaica, who also ended up playing for Team USA, what the fuck? Shrimp from Germany, and Croatian legend Drazan Petrovic. But that was about it. The NBA had yet to really pursue basketball on a global scale. The two international teams that were eventually added to the league wouldn't make their debut until 1995. 95% of all NBA prospects were American born or attending US universities. But as Steve Kerr said after Team USA's loss in last year's FIBA World Cup, this isn't 1992 anymore. Over the last 32 years, the number Facts. of foreign born NBA players has skyrocketed. From 21 foreign born players, just 5% of all active players in the league in 1992, to 125 foreign born players throughout the league in 2024, representing nearly a quarter of all active players. Today, when players join international competition, more often than not, they're just playing their NBA teammates in these tournaments. It's a bunch of NBA guys versus a bunch of NBA guys. The 92 Dream Team was and still is the greatest team ever assembled because they were a collection of the best basketball players, not just in the US, but in the entire world at the time. Mm. Outside of Hakeem, who was arguably not as good as Ewing or Robinson in 1992, and Isaiah Thomas, who was unjustly snubbed from this team, they couldn't have gotten any better. Now, in the case of this 2024 team, they're great, but they aren't nearly the best possible iteration of what the greatest collection of talent in the entire world would look like today. So not only was the Dream Team the greatest collection of talent in the history of basketball, nearly all of the players Man, on the if those four actually were from the US, bro. But they were also eviscerated Ooh. teams. More legendary than this 92 roster and the dominance of their individual players, the Dream Team was crushing their opponents. In game one of group play, the Dream Team scored 116 points while holding their opponent to just 48. In the semifinals, the Dream Team beat a really good Lithuania team by 51 points. If you want to know just how outmatched these countries were, look no further than the guy who just threw in the towel and just started snapping pictures of the Dream Team while the game was still going on. And in the gold medal game against a loaded Croatia team featuring six NBA players, the Dream Team won by 33 points. Damn. Look at this play right here. Gold medal game. The pride of an entire country on the line. Barkley hits Leitner for a three and calls it good before he even puts up the shot. These games were never close. In fact, this team wasn't even fair. During the 92 Olympics, the Dream Team had an average margin of victory of nearly 44 points. The largest margin of victory of any men's team at any professional level and twice the margin Team USA put up in the 2016 and 2020 Olympics. Their average margin of victory this summer has been just 10 points. Granted, they are still making tweaks to their lineups and experimenting with different game plans, so this number will likely change over the course of the Olympics. But through five exhibition games, they aren't winning in nearly the same blowout fashion we saw in the past. Mm. And this level of dominance that we saw from the Dream Team, the USA men's team in 96, 2008, and even 2012, will more than likely never happen again. In 1992, excluding the U.S. team, the 11 teams that played in the Olympic basketball tournament featured 18 players that were active in the NBA or were in the NBA at one point in their career. In this year's Summer Olympics, the 11 countries outside of the U.S. that are playing in the tournament feature 68 active or former NBA players. Now, this is an oversimplified way of looking at the caliber of these teams, because as we've seen before, having the most NBA talent on your roster does not guarantee success. But it does show just how much the world has caught up with the US in basketball. 
The once massive chasm that separated USA basketball from the rest of the world has been shrinking for over the last decade or so and is now at a point where many countries can truly contend for a gold medal. As it stands, this 2024 U.S. men's roster may be the greatest team ever assembled in terms of their accomplishments and their legacies and resumes. But when it comes to the sheer dominance they have on the court together and how good each individual player was at the time of the team's formation, the Dream Team is still the best team in the history of basketball. Mm. And with the leaps and bounds foreign players continue to make, I don't think we will ever see one single team reach this level of dominance ever again. A team that still remains the gold standard. Sheesh. W video, Jimmy, bro.